Alright, <clears throat> so most of you know the cost of batteries for trail cameras is through the roof right now. Uh, if you can even find them, especially lithium. Uh, lithium will become crazy expensive, almost doubling in cost in the last year or two. And again, like I said, even if you can if you can even find them right now, they're they're very difficult to find double A lithium batteries. But if you're running a cell camera, cellular camera such as this Browning Defender, running lithiums or an external is almost a must-have. You you need to you need to run one or the other. Uh, so with the cost of lithiums, I've been building these battery boxes for quite some time. Really simple setup. Uh, I buy this Survivor dry box off of Amazon. They are $17.99 and it's just a small box. That's all it is. It's got a really nice o-ring around the lid so when you close it, it's got three closures. Everything stays dry. Uh, I've had good luck with these. You can you can also use a cheap ammo box, the cheap plastic ones you find. They don't seal nearly as tight, and I do find more moisture and, and water and stuff gets inside those, but they will also work, especially if you're in a drier environment. They'll, they'll work just fine. But that's the box I use, the Survivor. Second, <clears throat> I buy these 12 volt, 7 amp, rechargeable batteries. Uh, I've been buying these two for $39.99, so roughly $20 a piece. And these ones have the small clips on the top, which take an F1 connector. Uh, what I do, I write the dates that I buy these. That way I know which batteries are which and, and how long they've lasted. And, uh, it makes it easier for me to keep track of what I've got going on. After that, uh, I guess next up would be your, your cord. Each camera is going to have a, an input cable, so you need to figure out what your camera brand and what size. I just, uh, I know Brownings take a 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter male input cord. So I buy two of these. They're three foot long, and I get them two in a pack for $9.99 from Amazon. What I do at that point, they, they come with two male ends. I will cut one of the male ends off as close as I can. Strip the wires down. Pull your uh, your red and your black out. Strip them. And that way you can crimp on the F1 connectors onto uh, these wires. So, before we get too far, I want to make sure that everybody's aware uh, a lot of cameras, I would say the vast majority of cameras, run on a 12 volt input. There are some cameras, and I know Spartan has a few, and, and I'm sure there's several others, I want to say maybe Covert, that run on a 6 volt system. If you hook a 12 volt battery up to a 6 volt camera, you will fry the camera. Warranty is not going to cover it, but you, you'll, you'll have a dead camera that's... Uh, you can throw in the trash. It's, it, it will fry it, so please look at the input on your camera it'll tell you right there what the what the input voltage should be and like I said the majority right now are 12 volt if you have a 6 volt camera what you'll need to find yourself is a voltage reducer same kind of cable it's got the same uh, same male end on it but it's got a reducer here that reduces it from 12 volts to 6 volts this is what you need if you're running a Spartan a Covert or any other camera that takes a 6 volt Please make sure. Again, I take no responsibility for your camera. Please double check your input voltage before you start this project. <clears throat> so again, we're gonna we're gonna take a look, build this one for this Browning. I've got a couple uh, F1 connectors. I buy them a hundred in a bag. Again, on Amazon, they're they're pretty cheap. A couple bucks for a hundred of them. I also use this. Uh, PG7 cable gland from Amazon, $8.99 for a bag of 10, 15, I think. What this does is I will drill a hole in the battery box. I usually try to drill it as low as I can. That way 
if there is any water that gets in there or moisture or whatever it's down low enough that it'll drain if it, if it gets up that high but I start I, I think these are 3 8 they may be a little bit bigger than a 3 8 but I'll put a 3 8 drill hole in there and then if I have to wallow it out a little bit so the so the connector will fit that's what we'll do very very simple so that it fits but that's what you want in the back corner there you want to take your uh, <clears throat> cable gland make sure everything fits these are really simple they just press through from this side they have like a little compression end on them so they'll crimp down on your cable there's what we got there you can see that so next thing and I've, I've screwed this up a million times so I'm gonna make sure that we don't screw it up this time take your cable one that you've stripped the ends feed it through your cable gland now if you crimp your connectors on now you obviously never get them through the cable gland so take it from me I've done it a dozen times and every time I'm like damn it I gotta I gotta remember but Feed that through your cable gland. Pull that up through. Leave yourself some slack. At that point, you can crimp your, your F1 terminals on there. So we'll go ahead and do that. Nothing's coming loose. So at that point, your, your box is fairly finished. You can get these longer. I buy a three-footers. That seems to work out well for me. Most of the time, my cameras are hung pretty low. So the three-footer, whether I set this on the ground, sometimes I've even strapped these. They do have, uh, they do have slots here that you can strap these around a the tree if you need to get it up a little bit higher. Actually, the slots are up here. So at that point, your box is pretty well done. So I take, pull yourself a little slack through your cable gland. Nothing's tight yet. Place your battery in the box. Pull things up here. Just give everything a dry run. Make sure it's going to work before we uh, button it up for good. So we've got power. <clears throat> To our end, we will uh, plug it into the camera here just to make sure everything's going to fire up before we button it up. You can see there the power power's right on. This camera, I have no internal batteries in it at all. It's running completely off the 12 volt right now. So you can put batteries in. They will run as a backup in case this would go dead, but you don't have to have batteries in there. <clears throat> so. There we go. We know it's working. It's work. It's powering the camera. So what you got in here now? You know everything's kind of loose, and you know if a coon or something gets up there, or cows knock it around, there is a chance that these could come off. So I take a very very simple pull noodle. You buy a pull noodle at Walmart or wherever, like 99 cents, and I just cut them with a razor knife to fit. I'll get my cable in there where I kind of want it, jam this down in, and I got a smaller piece that I'll jam into this end, and that just kind of keeps everything from flopping around in there. Again, right there, you're, you're, you're ready to go. Tighten up the cable gland, get yourself, you know, the amount of slack that you want. Hook it up to your camera. 
get ready to go. This this setup here will last four to six, sometimes eight months, depending on the season. And these super cold temperatures, obviously your battery life's gonna be less. But this is the way to go. Uh, if you add it up, everything I have right here, I have less than $45 into this setup between the box, the battery, the cord, the cable gland, and the connectors. It'll run. This is the way to go. If you do not buy the manufacturer's 12 volt or solar setup and you want to go this route, uh, again, less than 45 bucks, you got something that's going to run indefinitely. And all you have to do is to swap these out. You know, I carry, I, I, I keep a fair amount of 12 volts around. Charge this. <clears throat> Next time out, pop a new one in there, hook it up, you're ready to go again for another four or six months. Take your other one home, charge it overnight. I use a simple 12 volt battery charger, hooks right into a 110 outlet. You hook the red to red, black to black, let it sit overnight. Usually, you know, a few hours you get a full charge. And then again, this, this battery is ready to go for another six months. It's a really, really simple setup, cost effective. Is it perfect? Probably not. Is there, is there things I can improve? Probably. Uh, but this works for me. And when you're running a, a lot of cameras, multiple cameras, especially cell cameras, uh, to me, this is a no brainer. Good to go months on end uh, and what we can look at maybe in another video down the road is you can also tie a solar panel into these if you wanted to run a solar panel you would have to add a solar charge controller eight bucks ten bucks on Amazon very simple setup so you would have that and then you would also have to have a solar panel for it to run but in this case your solar panel your 12 volt would feed into here your solar panel would feed into here and then your battery cord to your camera would feed out of here and it would maintain 12 volts it wouldn't overcharge the battery fry your camera anything like that that's what this, the charge controller but we can get into that down the road that's going to add a few bucks to your setup but it's it's also you know if you've got something out on food plots or where it's getting a decent amount of sunlight it's definitely the way to go uh, adding a few bucks if you do the math you know even if you got 75 bucks tied up to, into a solar system that's going to run you forever and double a lithium batteries are now three sometimes approaching four dollars a piece it's going to pay for itself pretty quickly uh, so that's what we have in a nutshell pretty easy setup uh, again if you need any help recommendations please shoot me a message shoot me an email I'll get you hooked up with uh, what size cords you need, you know, and, and another thing, and I didn't do it on this one, but uh, something I do on a lot of my cameras because I do get squirrels and, and raccoons and that kind of thing messing with the cameras, I will buy a, a chew proof cord. Again, you can find those on Amazon, you can find them online. You know, what that gives you is a, uh, basically here's one here, and it gives you a, a steel armor around your cable. So nothing's going to chew through that. Same ends. Same thing here. You just crimp your F1s on. But these are these are worth going, paying the extra few bucks if you have trouble with raccoons or squirrels. So that's it. That's, that's an external battery in a nutshell. Again, is it perfect? No. But it, it works for me and has worked for me for years. So I hope, hope you guys can learn something and save a few bucks out there. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Thank you.